Okay, so it is the very 1st of January 2024, and I feel sick to my stomach. I've just been thinking about a, an article that I read uh, a few days ago, which was reprinted again in a local newspaper this morning. Um, uh, it's, it, it's an article that really de de details extremely graphic, um, sadistic, psychopathic uh, sexual violence. Um, and what I want to do is really just try and understand what is going on here. Um, I don't want to tell you what the article claims. Uh, I'm not going to go into that kind of graphic detail and traumatize you with that. What I rather want to do is to say why I find this, uh, this piece of writing so shocking and to think about it. That is the work here, to think about what is going on here. And it's part of this broad project, this, and th this representing violence project, which involves asking the question, what do accounts of violence do? Not what do they say? Sure, we can think about what they say, but 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 what do they do? Do they do they do they increase violence? Do they decrease violence? Do they help us understand it? Do they trigger dysfunctional responses to it? What work do these accounts of violence do? Um, and as I've sort of tried to process my own vis visceral emotional reaction and turn that into rather a kind of a, a more reflective, critical, conceptual understanding. Um, I want to offer that as a way of, of, of trying to think about our reactions and to try and intervene more effectively in problems of violence. Um, okay, so the, the project here, what do accounts of violence do? Do they increase or decrease violence? How do they work? And how they work doesn't necessarily depend on the conscious intentions of the author. The author may or may not intend them to, to achieve certain goals. Uh, but from a perspective of, of violent prevention, and particularly my own perspective as someone who has a lifelong uh, commitment to addressing gender-based violence, but also structural violence, social violence, colonial violence, um, uh, is, 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 is what sense can we make of this and how can we try and turn it into something helpful? Um, the first problem we face is that violence is hard to think about, um, especially this kind of very, very graphic, shocking, brutal, psychopathic violence that we're dealing with here. Um, and that it, it, it triggers emotional responses rather than thoughtful responses. So what I'm trying to do for you is to do that thoughtful response, to do that, to try and metabolize my own shocked response and to try and uh, subject it to a real uh, slow, thoughtful, critical reflection. The article in question appeared in the New York Times uh, on the 28th of December 2023. It was reprinted in the Sydney Morning Herald uh, on the morning of the 1st of January 2024, which is today for me. Okay, It is about uh, accounts of uh, sexual violence, uh, reports of sexual violence, and really what amounts to um, sexual torture perpetrated by Hamas uh, militias against uh, Israeli settlers on that notorious day of the 7th of October 2023, when there was uh, the, the, the um, attack that has subsequently triggered really massive um, uh, outpouring of violence against uh, Palestinians in Gaza. Um, the account is extraordinarily graphic. I'm not going to tell you what it says, and, and I'm not going to recommend that you go and read it either. Um, I just want to give you a sense of the context. It's It, it focuses on a really bizarre details of psychopathic sexual mutilation. It, 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 it revels in repeated graphic descriptions of violated bodies. Um, and in this sense, the article is is in fact violent to the reader. It brutalizes the reader in 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 this sort of fetishization of 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 the most unimaginable sexual violence. But it also subjects the reader to something else which I want us to try and think about more clearly, which is a kind of ideological brutalization. I think it it's doing it's doing a kind of other big political work also. Um, and so instead of describing these 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 sort of terrible um, reports and anecdotes um, that are collated together in this article. I want to ask, what kind of writing is this? What is its genre? You know, what is what 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 form is it? 
Um, and, and, and identify a couple of different things that we could use to say, well, what kind of piece of, of representation is this? And the one kind of thing it is, which is a kind of a popular term, I, I'm, I'm not aware that anyone has really given this in a very elaborate conceptual articulation, but what is commonly called trauma porn, okay, the pornography of, of trauma. Um, it's a kind of a, it's a, let's say it's a horror genre. It's it it what it does is it 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 is is it, it it attempts a kind of traumatic titillation by 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 obsessing with the most horrifying, the most triggering, the most confronting, the most distressing details um, of a of a of a of a particular account. Okay. Um, and it 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 it's it, its currency is shock value. Um, that is what this is, and 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 in terms of reading this description, I'm I'm really reminded of another another sort of piece of trauma for porn that had a that had a massive uh, social impact, and this was this is a, a sort of a, uh, an allegation a fake allegation of a video which goes on the internet under the name of Frazzle Drip. This was this was something that was that was spread through sort of right wing and conspiracy theory circuits at the time of the of the the first trump election okay and it's and and the the accounts of it claim that this is a video of hillary clinton and one of her aides sexually torturing and murdering a young girl and and it's it's extremely graphic this is not about sexual pleasure this is about this is about a macabre theater of grotesque psychopathic cruelty um, of course, no such thing ever happened. There isn't even a real video, but um, but it triggered such a powerful emotional reaction in people, and it plugged into a whole lot of, of other other actual real social problems. The Jeffrey Epstein uh, pedophilia uh, scandal, which many. Um, famous public figures in U.S. society were implicated in. So it took like the real problem of kind of elite pedophilia, and and blew it up into this 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 imagined moment of such excessive horror that it actually pro proved politically important in discrediting Hillary Clinton and getting Trump elected as the president of the United States. Um, so in, in that sense, it belongs to this kind of this 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 trauma porn genre, which is actually very socially powerful at triggering not only like emotional responses in individuals, but collective social responses that have social consequences. Um, in that sense, it's also part of another uh, another whole um, field of communication, which is clickbait. That this is a piece of commercial journalism which is designed to 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 um, create income by getting clicks and the resulting advertising, the resulting people wanting to, uh, paying money to get through a paywall, um, and and so it 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 works on on inciting a very very intense interest. The headline itself um, is 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 is, is, is is really uh, like it, it. It immediately arouses a lot of interest. It's very topical. It's very shocking, um, but then the content um, would be sure to cause a, 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 a significant e emotional impact, making people want to share the link, may making people want to discuss it. So it's a it's a commercial formula of clickbait, also, but it also f um, fits into more specific and more traditional uh, genre structures. And what and and one of the main ones it fits into is the the racist rape scare narrative. This is a really like tr traditional uh, Western racist and colonial narrative. Um, you know, in the U.S., it's well known uh, in in terms of the case of Emmett Till, um, but it, it's pervasive across colonial societies. This the story of the 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 colonizer being raped by the uh, colonized, um, the idea of black men raping white women, um, and this as triggering the kind of ultimate colonial horror, the white woman representing the vulnerable point of colonial dominance, 
and the and and sexual violence against the white woman as being the 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 ultimate uh, kind of um, threat within the colonial nexus. Um, and 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 these these narratives have a very specific function. They have a, a function of 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 getting the uh, creating a paranoid um, state of mind, and the paranoid state of mind creating a closed community and a hostile relation to other communities, and and then legitimating violence against those communities, legitimating in the case of Emmett Till lynchings, legitimating um, either legal or extra legal um, reactions, vigilantism, uh, militia attacks um, on colonial people. Um, so this is this is a this is a really contemporary instance of the racist rape scare narrative. Um, in doing that, it's also part of another a kind of colonial narrative structure, which is the the colonial native savagery scare. This is this is a this is also a very classic narrative um, of the barbarism of the natives. The story of you know the racist cannibals you know cooking your sister or or incredibly barbaric cultural acts or incredibly uh, savage psychopathic acts of of incomprehensible cruelty against the the colonizers and 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 this kind of fantasy of of native savagery is absolutely at the core of the colonial project um and it does two very very important things simultaneously um, the first is uh, it, in, it inscribes the indigenous people in a certain way. It, in, it, in, it inscribes them as innately violent, cruel. And in doing so, it then, it, it then advances the requirement of the civilizing mission, of, of the pacification of the native, the imposition of law and order. But in doing that, it also conceals its opposite. What it does is that it's an inversion. It creates this 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 mythology of the of the savage native, in order to conceal the savagery of colonialism, in order to the, conceal the extreme racist brutality of the establishment of the racist order on and against indigenous people. Um, so it's also it's a it's it's a very old narrative. It's a very common narrative. It's it's really been popular in hundreds of years of. Western colonialism, um, and it does a very, very specific kind of political work. And 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 what this New York Times article is is a is a is a is a is a, is a, is a really stark instance of 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 both the ra racist scare narrative, uh, but of the of the of the savage native narrative. Okay. Um, when we look at it, what's interesting always about these narratives and what, what is really striking when we when we do a close reading of this um, Screams Without Words article is firstly, it's extremely graphic. It really revels in the these details of 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 cruelty, these visual images of of mutilation. But in doing that, it offers absolutely no conceptual guidance through the horror that it constructs. It simply creates this this kind of this this chaos of horror, produces this intense emotion, but it but it but it specifically withholds any understanding of it. It actively avoids um, offering an explicit interpretative framework. Um, and that is really critical to what it is and what it does. Um, it's also uh, really important about what it doesn't talk about. Okay, it it focuses on the 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 graphic visual details of 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 this these alleged incidents, but it in completely erases context. That is that is one of the core works of this article is the the erasure of any kind of context that could help us make sense of it. Okay. Specifically, it claims to be about it claims to be about an instance of sexual violence as a weapon of war. And yet it tells us nothing about sexual violence as a weapon of war. It tells us nothing about the the, the massive global problem and the long historical tradition of sexual violence and its relation to war in multiple ways. Sexual violence as the spoils of war, as a reward for, for combatants, 
sexual violence as a deliberate way of terrorizing civilian com uh, populations in addition to the violence between the primary combatants. And it tells us also nothing about the consequences of the construction of military masculinities and the aggressive military masculinities relation to sexual violence and why we see sexual violence not only in combat situations, but sexual violence in military institutions. We see sexual violence in, you know, the American army. Um, we see it, we, we, it's a very widespread social problem, not only against, um, you know, purported enemies, but actually by uh, military personnel against other military personnel, not only men against women, but, you know, like more powerful men against less powerful men, sexual, so, um, um, uh, it's kind of intragender sexual violence. Um, the other thing, of course, it completely ignores and erases specifically is the history of sexual violence and conflict in the specific con context. It, it, it completely um, erases the history of sexual violence by Israeli soldiers and by West Bank settlers um, against Palestinian people. It, it, they, they, there's no mention of the sexual violence uh, from the Nakba through to the contemporary sexual torture and sexual assault of prisoners by Israeli forces, including current reports of sexual assaults of young boys, uh, uh, hostages held by the Israeli authorities, uh, being sexually assaulted and sexually tortured by the Israeli forces. Nothing, nothing of that is. There's, there, there, it's, it's purported claim to, to be about a link between between military combat and sexual violence is is notable by its absolute and utter absence. Um, there's not even mention of the notorious incident of Israeli um, uh, military rabbi Colonel El Karim. He's he's not his 2011 claim. We authorized Israeli soldiers to rape Gentile women, to rape non-Israeli women. Um, we argued that it's that it's permitted to breach the walls of modesty and satisfy the evil inclination by lying with attractive Gentile women against their will, out of consideration for the difficulties say faced by the soldiers and for overall success. So essentially, this this is the the kind of head rabbi of the of Israeli military saying that we should let Israeli soldiers rape women. It's good for morale. Um, not, none of the, these issues are, are even alluded to in this article. It 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 does a it does a, a a radical work of evacuating all context of sexual violence um, from this moment. The other thing, of course, it does is it's located within the October seven attacks, and yet it remains utterly silent in terms of trying to understand them. Nothing, nothing is given to us to frame the military, the political, or the ethical context of these October seventh uh, uh, attacks. There's there's complete silence about uh, about the the context of, of of colonization. There's complete silence about the Nakba. There's complete silence about what what is, Israeli politicians are um, explicitly referring to as Nakba too. Um, there is complete silence about the ethnic cleansing of Palestine. None of this is is even is is even hinted at in framing this incident. Um, what, what we have then is 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 a field of erasure, and simply a spotlight placed on these 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 highly graphic, visual, traumatic images that 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 occur in an emptiness of understanding, occur in an emptiness of, of meaning. It's also just really bad journalism uh, on, on a number of levels. Firstly, um, the, the, the entire thing is, is, is really assembled out of, out of hearsay. It's good in the sense that they have actively tried to um, uh, get a range of contributors, but very bad in that the contributors are all chosen from the, the, the same side of the conflict. Um, the key course, the the key um, sources choose to remain anonymous, which is 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 very problematic from a journalistic standpoint. That generally requires multiple additional confirmation. Um, it's 
it, it, there's no attempt to, to critically engage the fact that the, that, that the sources are, are mostly people who are inside the Zionist military project, that these are people whose literal job it is not simply to, to militarily defend the state of Israel, but to ideologically defend it. Um, that, that the production of accounts that, 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 um, that legitimate uh, Zionist violence against Palestinians is 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 ex is an explicit part of what they are required to do in their work. Okay, there, there's no talk of that. Of course, there's there's no, not even the, the the slightest hope that that the that the other side of this conflict are approached. There's there's no discussion with Palestinians. There's no discussion with. Um, Hamas leaders, there's no discussion with Hamas operatives, there's no discussion with um, Palestinian women about the sexual violence that they that they experience as part of the occupation. These things are simply are simply not there. And what 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 this really creates is a kind of a second iteration of something that we already saw immediately after the October 7 attacks, which was this notorious um account of the beheaded babies. Um, this, 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 this is an account that took off like wildfire, and it became emblematic of the fact that, um, that Hamas militias were simply these kind of sadistic, psychopathic, depraved um, madmen who were driven simply by bloodlust and cruelty. That, 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 and and this is really important to understand. In the absence of 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 the real context, the pseudo context rushes in to fill the gap. You know, intelligibility hates a vacuum, and so the pseudo intelligibility that that it, that that pours into these graphic descriptions is this idea of of um, the the kind of the psych the, these psychopathic individuals who, of course are not simply psychopathic individuals, but then it becomes the, the idea of a psychopathic group, that, that, that the entire political project of Hamas is, is, is simply an expression of a, of, of, a, of, of a sadistic bloodlust, that the entire resistance to Zionist occupation is simply um, the excessive cruelty of anti-Semitism um, that and so so an actual understanding of the situation is replaced by by this um, this sort of mythical account, which goes back to what what I was talking about before the account of the native savage, that 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 the the Zionist state representing the West, um, representing you know the 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 rationality uh, and the imposition of order of the West versus the Islamic terrorist versus the savagery of the Arab versus the the barbarism of indigenous people. This 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 is what this this is what rushes in to make the unstated sense uh, of this cruelty. Um, so what the article is it, it de is designed to do is to produce this incredibly intense feeling of emotional shock and and revulsion. Which overrides any ability to um, to think, and we cannot think clearly. We cannot bring any analytic understanding to this matter. Instead, it mobilizes firstly this kind of absolute sense of shock, but then in response to the sense of shock, a kind of a blind rage and hatred at at anyone who might make us feel that vulnerable. And the, and and this blind rage and hatred is then then automatically conscripted into the available existing narratives and and a number of very 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 powerful narratives that it immediately is subsumed under the narrative of of Jewish victimization this idea built on the 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 unimaginable horrors of the holocaust that 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 any kind of resistance to zionism is simply an extension of 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 anti-semitic cruelty, hatred, and violence. Um, it's conscripted into, as I mentioned before, the narrative of, of the Arab terrorist, um, this, this very, very powerful account that was constructed post-11 to justify 
the the um, the overthrowing of Middle Eastern governments, the 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 um, blanket bombing of um, Iraq, uh, bombing of uh, Afghanistan, the killing of a million and a half people by the U.S. and its supporters. Um, and of course, this the core underlying colonial narr uh, narrative of native savagery. And when we see that, and we step back from that, um, the article becomes a very, very different piece of work. Okay, and it, and and stepping back from that allows us to ask a number of questions. The first question that really sits with me is, why? Is there this powerful focus on this alleged sexual assault of 30 women? And what does that do to erase any consideration of the murder of 7,000 Palestinian women, 4,500 Palestinian young girls in the nearly three months now since the, um, the, the, the genocide in Gaza has, has um, been taking place? Um, why why is it that 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 these thirty graphic isolated incidents have such a powerful mobilizing effect, whereas the 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 massive scale of violence against girls, which is not articulated in specifically sexual ways, but entails the 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 the, the most brutal deaths, terrible injuries, amputations surgical amputations without the availability of medical resources or even anesthetics why 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 can these not be doing the kind of work that these that 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 these that, that these graphic um accounts of sexual assault do specifically why is the one taken as exemplary of gender based violence and the other is not we we can acknowledge that you know these 7000 women these 4500 girls being killed that this is violence but it's not seen as gender based violence okay why is that um and most of all this i think is the most important question I, that i have on my mind in trying to understand what's going on why does the one incite violent retaliation and the other doesn't why does this graphic account of these these psychopathic sexual assaults uh incite uh uh and legitimate a, 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 an entire genocide like the, the 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 wiping out of the gaza palestinian people um but the other the, the 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 genocide itself does not incite a massive uprising against Zionism and against Western colonialism, given that that uh, that that the, the sort of Zionist violence is really uh, extension of U.S. imperialism and the need of the U.S. to maintain a control center in the Middle East. Um, so. In understanding this and in understanding the work done by this article, we need to we need to be very clear about something. The crimes against humanity of the state of Israel do not continue simply because of its military might. That is certainly one reason. The fact that they that that, that they have this massive military might um, courtesy of the of US imperialist policies. But because it also, in the minds of certain sectors of the West, retains a kind of moral legitimacy, that 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 the 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 state of Israel maintains this moral legitimacy based on specifically not what it is, not 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 its contemporary conduct, but on the narratives of the victimization of the Jewish people in the Holocaust. That 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 horror is so overwhelming. It's so kind of mentally short circuiting, that 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 people living in the shock of that are unable to articulate any critique of of the of 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 the violence of the state of Israel because that might somehow be uh, um, argued as being some sort of inexplicable continuation of the violence of the Holocaust itself. And although the, there's no rational defense of that, it is, it, is, it, is, it is felt at the level of 
of the kind of horror of the Holocaust. It's, and and certainly for for in some places it's, it's felt as part of the guilt of the horror, Holocaust of the complicity. Um, and so we see, like specifically in Germany, these this 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 relentless terrorism of any person who speaks up um, uh, for the human rights of Palestinians, terrorism by German society and the German state. Um, the same thing we see in, 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 in the US is these continual attacks, like literally passing laws to make any critique of the human rights abuses of um, the Israeli state to 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 make them legally equivalent to acts of anti-Semitic violence. Um, so to understand this this totally deranged state of affairs um, that not simply exists but is the condition of policy, the condition of possibility of an actually unfolding real-time genocide. We need to we need to draw certain specific conclusions about this uh, about this article, and it's interesting because the New York Times really posits that it purports to be like uh, the you know the paper of of repute. In contrast to the New York Post, the New York Post kind of lowbrow tabloid, Trump supporting, you know, conspiracy theorizing. The New York Times is a you know, it's old money. It's 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 dignified. They believe in journalistic integrity. They believe in rigorous journalistic investigation. Not, um, in fact, what they believe in is U.S. imperialism. This is this is the these are the cheerleaders of you know the the um, invasion of Afghanistan um, uh, and Iraq. The you know this this is the newspaper that really. For for people who would otherwise be progressive, for people who might otherwise not be jingoistically militaristic, this is the newspaper that provided ideological cover for um, for 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 the U.S.'s war crimes in the Middle East uh, in the last twenty years. Um, so, firstly, this article does not contribute towards our understanding of gender-based violence. As a scholar of gender-based violence, a person who, who, who both works in uh, research in this field, but also as a practitioner um, in the field of uh, working with survivors of gender-based violence, preventing gender-based violence, this article does nothing. Um, there is, there's nothing inside it that is useful in terms of either understanding or reducing gender-based violence. Not only that, as a general scholar of violence and violence prevention, this article does absolutely nothing in terms of helping us understand and address other non-gender-based forms of violence, uh, civil conflicts. Um, it, 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 simply, it simply does no explanatory work. It does no conceptually edifying um, elaboration whatsoever. Rather, it actively does the opposite, okay? It short circuits our understanding of violence by deliberately evoking extreme emotion, by creating the, the trauma porn clickbait, by, by creating this massive bodily shock, uh, this kind of you know visual trauma, moral trauma, horror, sense of vulnerability, retaliatory rage. Um, and in doing that, it does something, and this is why I'm bothering to give you um, my thoughts on this. In doing that, this article actively incites violence. That is its work. I'm not saying that is the intention of the author. Don't 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 misunderstand me. Here. But that is its structural work. The effect of this article, and if you go and read the reader comments under the article, this is writ large there. That this is an article that is designed to incite violence. It's not designed to understand violence. It's not designed to, to reduce violence, okay? Um, in the context of the current genocidal attacks on Gaza, in the context of the 75 years of ethnic cleansing of Palestinians, it functions, as I mentioned, in exactly the same way as the misrepresentations, the other misrepresentations of the October 7 attacks, specifically that, 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 that trauma on clickbait around the, the beheading of babies, which turned out to be absolutely without any relation to reality. In doing so, this article 
incites fear, hatred, and violence. It does not attempt to even incite that violence towards the specific perpetrating individuals here, but towards entire categories of people, entire kind of ethnic and political categories, specifically towards people who are also at the same time extremely vulnerable. That is to say, the the, the Palestinians living under siege, living under ethnic cleansing, living under Holocaust attack. Um, at the same time, it, it does the other incredibly toxic and pernicious thing that I think is, the, is, is, is perhaps the core project of the article, is it legitimates Israeli state violence by, by throwing the reader into the state of shock uh, and horror about those that are the, the antithesis of Zionist colonialism. It, 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 without saying this, without putting this into words, but at the level of emotion, it legitimates a, a, a response of equal and exceeding terror against not only the individuals who perpetrate it, but by association and by, 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 by racist um, elaboration of thought um, not only all of Hamas, but all of the people of Gaza, all Palestinians, and by final extension, all Arab people, um, all Muslim people also. So what this article is, it's not, it's not um, an article about gender-based violence. It is an incitement to violence. This is a, it, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very crafted, uh, um, example of hate speech and incitement to violence. Um, the the thoughtfulness of its crafting is that it, it that it never names its work. It it describes these 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 graphic scenes, but it never reflects on what it's doing. And then we have to try and work through our own shock and horror at what it's describing, and then say yes, but what is it doing? And realize that what this this article is doing is it is that that, that this this article is in fact collaborating in the justification of a contemporary genocide.